and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me as always is my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. Yo. We are back once again with a look at another class in Veil of the Void. We are conti we are continuing our non-caster go, go through, and that's going to be a bit of a theme for this week and next week. Before we get back to casters with the one that's going to be too big for just one episode, unless I get unless I get some stronger coffee, and even that might not be enough. <laughs> And I know some of you might say, wait, you don't drink coffee, you drink tea. Exactly. Why do you think I laughed at him? <laughs> I think the only, th I think the last time that I drank, actually, now that I think about the last time that I had coffee was, was when it was when I was at that coffee place with you and everybody else. Mm-hmm. And even then I didn't drink coffee. I drank what was essentially a smoothie. I think it. Wait a minute. What am I thinking? That I had co I had only had coffee once one time. The more the bigger thing that I ended up getting was that baklava, and the time that I had quiche. Quiche gets a bad rap. As someone who can't eat eggs, I I, I can't comment. <clears throat> but the baklava was really good. Mm -hmm. I, I like baklava, and I haven't had it since Dino Zero's um, closed up. But getting back, getting back on the rails. Last week we talked about the negotiator and made a bunch of big O jokes, as well <laughs> as well as as well as a few other gags about 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 it basically being the noble. Yep. And the pirate, if you so choose. This week, we are handling the smuggler, so I can remind you all of one thing. Han shot first. Anyone who says oh. otherwise, we will give you the worst, most offensive, most uh, most inhumane insult possible. We'll call you Disney stands. You love the mouse. Now go gargle his cum some more. <laughs> and, and... If, and if that seems if that seems like we're in, we're insulting our audience, no, because we know our audience isn't that stupid. <laughs> Man, you really are salty over that Twitter exchange. <laughs> oh, I'm not I'm not salty. I just I just like um I just like I just like memeing. <laughs> but. This week we are t we are tackling the smuggler, and just from the name alone, you, one w one would basically go with the idea of the smuggler being the Han Solo class. And in a lot of other science fiction RPGs, the smuggler archetype is the fantasy equivalent to the rogue. Well, I think that's basically what it is in Starfinder, but I haven't touched Starfinder in like three years. Mm. Now. When it comes to rogues, they do annoy me in certain aspects, but they don't annoy me nearly as much as casters in the in a lot of setups. I think the big problem that I ha I think the big problem that I have is when you have a skill monkey character in a when in a class game in a class based game that already has skills, so you have mm. one person that has a monopoly on it and thus a lot of other people can't utilize skills. Mm -hmm. Like, consider consider the fact that the the argument for the longest time regarding the skill monkey is essentially they get more skill points than everyone else, which on paper is fine, but in practice, what it ends up meaning is that when skill things are required, which if your ga if your game is not going to be um, all combat all the time may end up coming coming up. You've got a bunch of other characters who don't who don't know what to who are just sitting there th sitting there twiddling their thumbs. Another example of this kind of thing, and I 
I hate to keep picking on Shadowrun, but it provides so many good examples of this kind of thing. The one hacker problem. One hacker to rule them all. That's not to say the hacker is overpowered in Shadowrun, because it isn't. It's just that because of the way their interaction with the game world works, they get they tend to get a monopoly on time and other things. That and while they're doing their hacking, everybody else is not is not able to interact unless you have a layered unless you have a layered encounter with hacking and regular combat or something else. But that is not all that common. Not all that common, and in so doing, you are actually slowing down gameplay. Mm -hmm. We see that with deckers and their drones all the time in combat. Yeah, and. Astr and astral mages in Shadowrun would be just would be just as guilty of this. But the yeah, th this all uh, it, it, my last comment on it is a uh, uh, it it stems from something we talked about when reviewing Heavens and Heresies and and having Tanner work with us. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's someone playing who gets to play more of the game than others, and that's not fair. Yeah. The other the other big issue that ends up happening with the archetype of the smuggler is in my experience far too often people want to play the smug the smuggler because obviously they want to be Han Solo or Jack Sparrow or the like but the problem is they have a protagonist problem. Yeah, they don't realize that the reason that this class was called scoundrel in some games was because Smugglers are outside the law. Whether that law is a despotic regime like the Galactic Empire or a legitimate, uh, you know, actual fair government is immaterial. They're outside the law. They're, and as such, they are already inherently at a lower. Um, they're they're not they're not heroes to begin with. Even Han Solo was not a hero. To begin with, he fled or was going to flee when uh, the Yavin 4 base was going to take on the Death Star. And it is only because Chewie cajoled him and told him, bruh, we need to help the kid, that he came back and helped Luke. Han Solo was not a hero. <laughs> And, of course, that brings the question of how you do the smuggler in a heroic fashion. Um, the, approach, the approach that I usually go with is that the heroic smuggler is, some, is, some, is somebody who is the embodiment of the phrase, the young man knows all the rules, the old man knows all the exceptions. Yeah. I mean, I could also point to any of... Errol Flynn's roguish characters, but that's that's kind of an exception that proves the rule in my mind. Mm -hmm. Errol Flynn was always very dashing, and most of his characters were roguish. Yeah. Now, the big the big reason to to bring all to bring all of this up is to illustrate the pitfalls when it comes to playing at when it comes to playing as a smuggler or a scoundrel and also also to provide a bit of a small context for what's go for what's going to come the same way that we've done with previous classes th throughout the series sorry carbonation so mm -hmm. getting to the getting to the meat of the matter we open up with the smuggler uses clever tactics to dominate both on and off the field. They tend to be brilliant pilots and are effective at sneaking around a loud battlefield. They prefer to keep their distance in a battle. Usually they will use cloaking or holograms to ensure that distance is maintained. Yet many smugglers are known as feared brawlers when pushed to it. Forget fighting fair around these troublemakers. Always remember there are no true rules in space. <laughs> yeah, that that sounds like a smuggler. That sounds like someone outside of the rules. 
And for some reason, I'm always seeing, seeing that whole no rules thing. I'm reminded of one of my favorite scenes in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. You know, the whole <laughs> thing with the knife fight. Yep. Which, hang on, gotta go over the rules first. What, rules in a knife fight? There's no rules. Right before he gets kicked in the nuts. Mm hmm. Oh. And the other th the uh, the other thing is that f is that fighting fighting. Dur I really do feel that um, roguelike characters should focus less on being skill monkeys in the way people design, and more on being the guy who gets away with dirty tricks. In other words, dirty deeds done dirt cheap. <laughs> I. Th I could have I could have swore that that was actually used as an ab a ability in a game that a game in my library. I keep thinking it was Fantasy Craft that where somebody did that into a set of feats, but it could have been something I'm, else. I, I'm pretty sure it is Fantasy Craft because I'm pretty sure I remember going over it when we were doing uh, looking at feats for FF Legend. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I... <laughs> so starting proficiencies. We have for weapons all pistols and the plasma rifle, as well as archaic weapons, light and medium armor, and the hidden pistol and smoke grenade. Well, yeah, you got to be able to make a flashy exit, but also make sure that they can't shoot you on the way out. I don't know why, but whenever I think of the of a creative way to use a to use a hidden pistol, I'm always thinking of the um of some kind of Roman handshake. <laughs> that fits. Mm -hmm. But then we have leveling beyond level one. When you level up, add one d six plus one d three plus vi plus vitality or five plus vitality to your max HP. Though so you start with two pistols and one carbon dagger. Synthetic medium armor, 6d6 times 1,000 system credits, and a bonus level in covert and dual wielding. And as oh, we've guns akimbo. Yep. As we've established in the past, um, dual wielding in Veil of the Void is not shit. Yeah, this is not pay not to suck. Mm -hmm. So, we, with abilities, we start at level 1 with Clever Fighter. Start with 8 max fighter points, or FP. At every 5th level, you have, a max HP, you have a max HP of either 12, 16, 20, or 25. Max may, FP, Monk. Yeah, max FP. You may spend these points and choose one of the below actions. Regain half points during a short rest, or full points during a long rest. So we have Trick Shot. As an attack for 2 points, you may fire... From your ranged weapon using a special homing bullet. After performing the attack, you may choose up to two other adversaries within five squares of the target, inflicting the same damage to them. Which. I'd say. Hey, what that, hit me? <laughs> I don't know what hit you. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have low shot. You may expend two points to perform an attack. Use your late ranged weapon to shoot an adversary in the leg, knocking them prone. They take your finesse in extra damage. And we shoot them in the balls instead. <laughs> Every time somebody would use Stunning Fist when I would run 3.x, they would always visualize it as Dick Kick City. And for those of you saying, well, that just gives an advantage to, to women, no. There's a reason there's a term called cunt punting. Um, and it hurts just as much. The, thir the third is blinding shot. After you perform an attack, ranged or melee, you may fire a flare shot at the target for three points. They gain the blind condition for one round. If the affected adversary's next attack hits, it deals half damage. This can only affect the same adversary once every three rounds. So you shoot them... <laughs> And then you essentially do a Dale Gribble and throw pocket sand or the equivalent thereof. <laughs> yep. And the last Clever Fighter ability is Disarm Attack. 
You may perform this as an attack action for three points. On a success, the adversary drops their weapon. If they cannot drop their weapon, they lose any extra attack actions. They may be affected by this once every three rounds. And given how there's plenty of monsters that are likely going to have extra attacks, that's still going to be useful. Yeah. It's been, like, like if you they can't drop it because, you know, it's, like, attached to their body, like claws or teeth, this is still mighty useful. Mm-hmm. Then we get shoot first. Ah! Smugglers are the fastest gunslingers in space. At the start of combat, after initiative is determined, but before a round begins, you may perform a free attack on an adversary within your short range. For example, using a weapon that has 1636 range, you can attack someone within the 16 range. At level 10, you can perform an attack on up to three adversaries. A free attack within the short range. Mm-hmm. Wow. This this encourages you to go into fucking melee with your gunslinger to get fucking free attacks. This would also be print this would also be far would probably be plenty offensive if you have the plasma rifle at the start of combat. <laughs> Let's see. At level 2, you gain many connections, and this is a non-exclusive. You know people who will buy anything for the right price. While in a major city, you may find the back alleyways and sell both legal and illegal items for an increased price. You may purchase modifiers and items that are not sold on the regular market. When selling or buying goods, you may roll an average 3 speechcraft check. On success, change the item's value in your favor by an additional 20%. Smugglers gotta smuggle. Mm -hmm. This is legitimately just... This is what smugglers actually do. I got some contraband. Nobody knows it's contraband. They just think it's bottles of ginger beer. Yeah. I'll sell it to you because you know what it really is. You know, you know the... You know the code words. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'll buy it for 500 SE. Oh, come on, man. I had to get this all through customs. I had to run away from some pirates. Dude, come on. You can give me a little more. <laughs> Fine, 600, 600 credits. All right, that's a good deal. Let's do this. Uh, you also gain skilled pilot, which is also non-exclusive. When flying <laughs> through hazardous terrain, such as asteroids, debris, adversary fire, etc., you gain <laughs> auto-hit die. Once per day, you may roll with three auto-hit dice on a piloting or flight check. Holy shit. Three auto-hit dice on a piloting or flight check once per day? Mm -hmm. That's... Th that's fucking... Wow. And, you'll, and of course, you gain an extra skill point. At third level, you gain Gunslinging, gain plus one in the dual-wielding skill, and an extra attack action when equipped with dual pistols. Alternatively, add plus one to Weapons Master and gain an extra attack. Gain the Expertise Ranged Specialist. Oh, that is so good! That is so good! Because <clears throat> that, that, that is... No matter what, you're getting the expertise ranged specialist, which, um, as someone who likes to, even though we're, we're going to probably break them all down later, mm -hmm. um, I still am going to pull up this expertise real quick. Uh, ranged specialist, where are you? While not locked in combat with a ranged weapon, you may reroll a single one result on up to two attacks. While locked in combat, you may use your ranged weapon to deflect. Mm -hmm. I believe locked in combat means within melee range of uh, of an adversary. Yeah, and this fur this further goes into where g we did we did the joke about akimbo. Now we're going into full on um, gun fu. Yeah, I'm gonna use my uh, my two pistols here at melee range. Uh, oh, we're fighting? We're fist fighting? Um, go ahead. 
swing your blade. I'm going to literally spin my gun across it, Dante style. <laughs> oh. At fourth level, you gain advancement training, and you gain play the odds. Once per round after your first successful attack, you may roll a d6. On a five or a six, you inflict an additional finesse. You inflict an additional plus finesse in damage. On a one, you must perform an unjam action next round. Three round cooldown. Never tell me the odds. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say this is. A I I'm reminded of the gunslinger, of the gunslingers uh, weapon jamming issues in Pathfinder, but this one makes a bit more sense. Mm -hmm. uh, at fifth level, you gain spent you gain your first pa first step in your specialization. The three that you can pick from are gun runner, swindler, and bounty hunter. At you also gain in space. There are no rules. You may use five fighter points to add pips to a third die. Oh, jeez. Oh. At sixth level, you gain su you gain subtle rebuttal, which is not exclusive. You may reroll two failed dice on speechcraft checks once every four rounds. You also gain quick shot. Which is not exclusive. Add plus one to your initiative. If if you are not first in initiative order after this bonus, you may perform your turn before anyone else during the first round. Okay. <laughs> and that is non exclusive. Anyone else can take quick shot too. Yeah. Um I know I bring it up a bit, but Imagine the imagine um, some of the other classes that we've covered get taking quick shot. Um, field night, field night, mm -hmm. field night. Surprise! <laughs> yeah, getting the getting a literal surprise charge. Um, I I also I have to make this joke. I have to mm -hmm. subtle rebuttal and quick shot being in the same level tier <clears throat> just makes me think smuggler after a job well done in the den of miscreants having found some company quick shot subtle rebuttal it's never like this babe i swear <laughs> anyway at seventh level you gain advancement training at eighth level you gain masterful retreat which is non-exclusive when using the disengage action you gain plus two squares of extra movement if you end up eight plus squares away from your ad initial adjacent adversary, you may use an extra action to attack the target. It's a tactical retreat with a covering fire. Mm -hmm. oh. At ninth level, you gain gunplay, which is also non-exclusive. You are no longer bound by the melee ranged rules, allowing you to attack a non-adjacent target in combat. If an adjacent adversary goes before you, you do not suffer the penalty. You may now perform a deflect reaction using a gun. You can do the Dante spin. Mm-hmm. Oh. This adds on to the deflect you would already get when being locked in combat from ranged specialist. Mm-hmm. You and can deflect from range now, though. Yep. So, in other, in other words, I shoot your I shoot your bullet with my own bullet. Wait a minute, we, we became Bokenger? <laughs> Boken Black is a badass, and anyone who says otherwise will have to answer to me. Mm -hmm. At 10th level, you gain your next ability in your specialization. At 11th level, you gain advancement training. At 12th level, you gain Lady Luck. Once oh, per Jesus. round, when you roll three threes or fours during a successful skill check, gain plus one bonus die on your next non-attack skill check. <laughs> Let's see. At level thirteen, you gain Fan the Blaster, which is a ex which is exclusive. I should note, um, gunplay and Lady Luck are not exclusive. And yeah, there's a lot of non-exclusive skills. Mm -hmm. But Fan, anyway, Fan the Blaster as an attack action and five fighter points 
Unleash a rapid fire on all adversaries within your gun's short and long range. Make an attack for each targetable adversary. This attack may only be used once every four rounds. Alright, <laughs> you shoot all. How do you fan a blaster? It doesn't have a fucking hammer. With DACA. That's how. Okay, so smugglers are also orcs. Got it. <laughs> Freebooters are a thing. Mm-hmm. I like this, though. Imagine you're using the plasma rifle. <laughs> to things all close and long away. Yeah. The <laughs> I will admit the other thing that comes to mind is um, Pip Bernadotte going it in, going into the camp in Brazil. <laughs> oh, Pip, I miss you. <laughs> but at least you will live on forever with Ceres. Mm -hmm. At fourteenth level, you gain advancement training. At fifteenth level, you you gain your next specialization ability. At sixteenth level, you gain Trickster, which is non exclusive. When gambling in any form such as cards, dice, etc., you may auto automatically succeed a sleight of hand check once per game played. Gain an auto hit die when performing sleight of hand checks. So automatically succeed sleight of hand during gambling, but also just an auto hit die on any sleight of hand check ever. Mm -hmm. Also, um, it says trickster, so I am contractually obligated to go da 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 da. Da 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 ba da ba ba And call anyone I, I want to right now Joker. <laughs> at seventeenth level you gain advancement training. In at eighteenth level you gain run this town. Choose whether you are more of a criminal or lawful smuggler. While within a town you instinctively know all the back alleyways. You may perform a knowledge check to learn specific histories of crime syndicates or town leaders based on what you chose. Your attacks inflict plus 10 damage in plus 10% damage in towns. Gain an auto hit die on dodge checks. Gain an auto hit die on speechcraft checks when talking with lawful or criminal groups based on what you chose. This is a non-exclusive and is also not a capstone and gives you this much fucking shit. Let's see. At 19th level, you gain That's Cheating. At the end of a short rest, roll 6d6. These dice become your cheater pool. Once per round, you may choose to either swap out a die that you rolled with one from your cheater pool, reduces your pool by one, or choose to sacrifice it to give an ally plus one auto hit die on a check, or to change one adversary hit die to a two result. <laughs> That's cheating. Yes, it is. What are you going to do about it? Oh. And, and, of course, at level 20, you gain your specialization ability and your ultimate bootleg captain. You have mastered the smile as well as the smuggling. Add plus one to either your finesse or charm. This may bring you above nine. Your shoot first ability now targets all adversaries within long range. Regain all expelled fighter points after a short rest. Just the shoot first ability now targeting everything up to your long range is worth this. Especially... That's, that's three opponents, three adversaries within the long range of your weapon. Free and attacks. And then we make this even dumber with, of course, Fan the Blaster. So combine both of those with the rifle. <laughs> uh, but then we get to our specializations for this cl for the uh, smuggler. The first is gun runner. This is a non-exclusive specialization. Mm -hmm. Gun runners are experts of aeronautics. They know every nook and cranny of their ships. Nothing goes on they cannot handle. They excel as pilots. And few can stand against them in a dogfight. If you pick this one, you gain one bonus level in mechanics and piloting. Why am I hearing Danger Zone? I don't know. 
Sure sounds like they might be a top gun, though. <laughs> so the first two abilities, first one is Emergency Backup Plan. Once per 24-hour period, you may activate the emergency cloaking device of your vehicle to hide it. Once per day, you may also activate the shield boosters of your vehicle, doubling the number of shields for three attacks. Is there a difference between a 24-hour period and a day? I want some... I wouldn't be surprised or... if certain planets have um, days that are longer or shorter. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking more in the sense of gameplay, because usually a, a day would still be comparable to 24 hours, no matter where you are. Mm-hmm. Um, I want some clarification on that. Yeah. Please. Please and thank you. So after that is Aeronautic Specialist. Gain plus two expertise points and add plus one bonus level to your piloting skill. Everyone on a vehicle you are piloting may reroll one failed die during their checks. So just for picking Gunrunner, you don't just get plus one bonus level in piloting, you get plus two bonus levels in piloting. One from Aeronautic Specialist, and one from just choosing the specialization. Mm -hmm. um, not to mention two additional expertise points. That's good. Yep. At 10th level, you gain two more abilities. First is Lock on Target. As an extra action while piloting, you may lock onto a target within range of your vehicle. All allied attacks against the target gain an auto-hit die. Why do I hear celestial be celestial being theme stu theme music and an, <laughs> an annoying set of twin Irish brothers? <laughs> you also gain not even the tail lights. You may perform a tough five piloting check to instantly jump or travel to warp speed. This may successfully be performed once per twenty four hour period. Eh. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some shit. You're going to see some serious shit. Excuse me. At 15th level, you gain two more abilities. Quick Turn and Barrel Roll. Barrel Roll is an exclusive to the Smuggler class, though. Mm -hmm. It's an exclusive skill within the specialization. The specialization is not exclusive, but the skill is. Yep. Quick Turn. Once every two rounds, you may sacrifice half the ship's movement and an extra action to instantly turn the ship around in place. This maneuver is hard on a ship, so on your next movement, you suffer minus two max movement speed. If you are within arc of an adversary ship, you may perform one free attack against them. Sir, they're running away from us! Sir, they're coming right at us! What? <laughs> mm -hmm. You also get, and like I said, barrel roll. Um. So just just remember to just remember to press Z and uh, just remember to press R tw L R R twice. Do a barrel roll. You may use your reaction and five fighter points to immediately dodge an attack. There we go, and we also now see the reason why it's exclusive. It requires fighter points, which are already exclusive to the smuggler. Mm -hmm. And at twentieth level, you gain Captain Runner. Your jumps can reach twice the distance, and warps can run two hours longer without overheating or experiencing the negative effects of the void. Your ship now consumes half fuel. So, for anybody who wants to be a flyboy or the or the ship's pilot, this is this one's for you. This is how you become Wash. Mm -hmm. this, um, this is also, how you hopefully I... don't become pilot in from Farscape. But Pilot loves Moya. <laughs> I mean, he can't help but love Moya. He's a part of her. Anyway, um, Captain Runner is also another exclusive. At least, I think it is. Um, no, it isn't. Okay, I'm still looking at the not updated version of this, apparently. <laughs> yep. So, next we have Swindler. Swindlers are the nimblest and trickiest of criminals. They can both skulk through shadows and a large crowd, blending in with ease. They specialize in stealth, sleight of hand, lockpicks, and tracks. You gain two bonus levels in sleight of hand and covert by taking Swindler. Was that tracks or hacks? Hacks. Okay. 
Uh, Swindler is another non-exclusive specialization. Mm -hmm. In fact, looking at it, it has no exclusive skills. Mm -hmm. So first we have Fear No Barriers. When you attempt to use lockpicks or hack programs to break into doors or systems, you gain an auto-hit die on the check. Twice per short rest, when you critically fail a programming or sleight of hand check, you may re-roll that check, including the ones. Hmm. You also gain Nimble Strike. Once per round, after performing a successful attack, you may perform a contested Covert Observation check. On a success, the attack target cannot perform a reactionary strike against you. Fuck you and your AOO! <laughs> I'd say that's given the fa given the fact that if somebody's playing a smuggler, they're probably not the tankiest guy. Mm -hmm. This is a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. At tenth level, you gain two more abilities: ambush leader and quick retreat. For ambush leader, you add plus one to your initiative. At the start of combat, if you successfully partake in a surprise round, add an additional plus one to your initiative. You may also bring one other player who failed to join the surprise round. A big tanky guy who couldn't sneak worth a damn. Yeah, you're still ambushing. <laughs> <clears throat> you also get quick retreat. As long as a creature cannot see you, with either magic, with either regular sight or magical detection, you may instantly retreat into the shadows. You'll be considered covert with five successes. <laughs> I'm behind a set. I'm behind a set of boxes, and the boxes shield me from magic. I'm going to disappear now. That reminds me of a. Where'd he go? Who's there? Where'd he go? You know. So, so many stealth games. Stealth games or um, open world games where it's where so long as you don't do something really, really stupid after accidentally alerting guards, they just ignore you. Mm -hmm. oh, you also gain. You also gain. Uh, wait a minute. What, what am I saying? Ah. At 15th level, you gain Embedded Hack Program. You gain the Mystic Spell Hack Code, and you cannot be hacked. And the Mystic Spell Hack Code is the following. This spell manipulates a small arcane current that resides in many technological items. Difficulty is contested arcanting. The range is 15 squares. The duration is instant. The cooldown is three rounds. Target an item or mechanized unit and perform a contested arcanting programming check. On a success, you hack into the target. You may inflict 10 electrical damage to a living or manned machine or one of its or perform one of its actions. If the target is not a controlled being, you may choose to overload its systems, sending out a shockwave in a 5x5 area field centered on it and inflicting 15 force damage, or gain basic access to the machine. The fact that, the fact that hacking has a combat utility makes me smile. The fact that hacking has a magic side to it makes me smile. Oh, there's there's that too. And when you when I'm always I'm always interested when it, whenever you have a setting where magic and technology um are go, are can, are parallels with each other or grow up parallel to each other because you can because it provides some interesting directions when you think of the consequences of that idea. In my uh, in my personal setting that I've been designing since I was like sixteen, in the technological and in the techno magic side of, of the science fantasy part, mm -hmm. um, the biggest conglomerates seal simple spells into disposable items. Certainly, <laughs> certainly a fair, certainly a fair thing. Um, you at fifteenth level. You also gain wide open, gain an auto hit die when attacking from covert, 
and add plus one to the critical table on critical attacks. <laughs> You're wide open! Mm -hmm. And at level 20, you gain dodgy backstab. After a successful dodge or deflect, you may immediately teleport behind your target with a two times finesse square range and perform an attack against them. If you succeed, you inflict an additional 10 damage. It's fucking every cold steel! Uh, is every fucking game we're re reviewing these days having a goddamn nothing personnel <laughs> kid moment? What the fuck? <laughs> We thought we had gotten away from it. I think it's gonna haunt. I think it's gonna haunt us for the rest of our careers. Probably. But to be fair, given what the swindler is trying to be, I can't say it's not called for. Also true. So, next we have bounty hunter, who hopefully isn't showing up. Isn't showing up in a ridiculously tricked out battle mech. And pissing off Jade Falcon, but to that I say, good. Look, Jade Falcon doesn't like anything. So at, so their misery is my gain. Dirty fucking clanners. Mm -hmm. So, <sighs> Bounty Hunter. No one ever wants to be the target of these fierce individuals. Bounty Hunters excel at the tracking and capturing of wanted individuals. They typically are out for themselves and have no trouble bending the law if it helps the hunt. Bounty hunters never give up the fight while pursuing their targets and always get them in the end. Uh, I know some. I know some people will bring up either Mando or Bo or Boba Fett when it comes to bounty hunter thing, but as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, the true the true bounty hunter with Star Wars mythos is Django. Yep. Of course, Django's dead, baby. Mm -hmm. And as far as the as far as the bounty hunter BattleTech joke I made, I won't go too deep into it. I'll just say, in the BattleTech universe, the bounty hunter is the Dread Pirate Roberts, as Tex pointed out. Yep. It's never and it is. It's always difficult to tell who who or what they are. Pe and they show they show up, kick ass, and then disappear. Sometimes it's not even the same person or in the same mech, but they always show up. Yep. So you start out with two uh, with two abilities. Dedicated Hunter, which grants the expertise awareness and never lost. Gain plus two bonus levels in hunting and tracking and environmental survival. Once you set your mind on a target, you can detect their movements more easily, being incapable of losing even the faintest trail, barring there is no magic involved. While hunting a target, you gain an auto-hit die on your hunting tracking skill checks. And those two expertise, uh, awareness, you have quite the discernment for people and situations. Add plus one pip to your initiative rolls and plus one auto hit die on insight and observation checks. As for never lost, you never get lost in towns. While you may not know exactly where you are going, you tend to end up where you need to be. Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs> not all who wander are lost. You also, They're just really focused. Yep. You also gain marked target. As an extra action, you may target an adversary. All attacks and contested checks against that target gain an auto hit die. This mark stays on the target until they are killed, knocked out, cancelled, or for two minutes. If the target is killed or knocked out while this effect is up, you may move it to another target. <laughs> Well, we've got our good old marking thing from 4E. Yep. Let's see. At 10th level, you gain target located. Marked targets take an additional plus finesse in damage from your attacks and cannot perform reactionary strikes against you. <laughs> Marked targets, fuck your AO, uh, AOO. Mm -hmm. 
At 15th level, you gain Loose Lips. Gain an auto-hit die when performing a speechcraft or intimidation roll against someone who has information on your target. Loose Lips think ships. At and at 20th level, you gain Thrill of the Hunt. Gain an additional attack action against both your marked targets and the target you are currently hunting, as well as inflicting an additional 12 damage on all attack rolls. Jesus! Just an additional 12 damage, straight up. Okay. This class isn't even, like... Super combat focused. It is. It has quite a bit of combat utility, but a lot of its other stuff is is uh, more support than straight combat. Mm -hmm. But let, let's not let's not forget that if you ke if you kept hitting, that's twenty. That's an additional twenty four damage per round. Because remember, dealing an additional twelve damage on a, on attack rolls and get an additional attack. A action against that marked target. Yep. Or, um, and of course, there's always the fact that if you're dual wielding, even more additional damage. Yep. I'd say, the, I'd say the smuggler very, very much doubles down on the dirty fighter thing instead of, the, instead of focusing on the skill monkey thing. Yeah, it has its definite skill niches, which is all related to, well, smuggling. But other than that, um, it's a very, it looks very utilita uh, utilitarian, mm -hmm. U a utility fighter. Yeah, the fighter, the fighter points mechanic certainly, certainly is going is going to be their big bread and butter when it comes when it comes to fighting, but. There, but even with that, it's still all about fighting dirty. Mm hmm. Uh, I'd say I'd, I'd say if we I'd say if there would be if I were to use a video game analog, I suppose one good one good instance would be. Um. I know they I know they changed his name, but I don't acknowledge it. McCree. I mean, they just changed his name from a person they didn't like to a literal porn star, so... <laughs> Not sure if that's much better for them. But, but yeah, you can... McCree sounds like a... Definitely seems like a smuggler, probably along the lines of the bounty hunter. Yeah. When it comes to the... The Gunrunner specialization is definitely for those who want to be flyboys. And it's also probably the closest to Han Solo. Or and or any, uh, I'd probably say I'd probably say to a certain extent Starbuck. Yeah, but of course, now you're dwelling into parody territory. Oh, the sw the swindler. I'd I'd say for those who want to be the classic thief, is going to be the specialization they would pick. Classic thief. With a little bit of a, of a, of a um, fuck you. I'm also, it, I'm also a special donut steel OC mixed in. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, Kevin. You piece of shit. And the the bounty hunter is, well, it's a, it's exactly what it says on the tin with a little bit of ranger, honestly. Marking targets makes sense as a bounty hunter, though. Mm -hmm. As for uh, as for who I would put this to be most, um, a cyberpunk version of Geralt. <laughs> you want to know what's fun? You want to know what's funny about that? Hmm. The fact that the fact that there is the fact that um. There is, art, there is art all over the place of cyberpunk Geralt and Siri. Oh, I know because Siri hints to being in the cyberpunk world and in uh, Wild Hunt. Mm -hmm. But that's a. Uh, I just I I think cyberpunk Geralt would fit in perfectly as as a as a, a smuggler bounty hunter. 
though that may change with uh next um with next week's yeah. class. Incidentally, I do I do very much like the splash art here. I see the splash art that they that's used for the smuggler at the ba at the yeah. back of it. I see that as a bounty hunter. Yeah, they're clearly looking at a target profile in their on their holographic display, and they're like, "Okay, I need to find this guy and bring him in, and or just take his ears and head." Mm. Whereas um, the splash art at the front. That's just Mal. That's literally just Mal. Coat and everything. Coat and everything. The guns. The guns even look close. Or the gun, I should say. Mm -hmm. it, it's just... It's Mal with four arms and if he was a lady. Although, four arms... That the uh, we've talked about guns akimbo, but what would be what would be a version? What would be an equivalent version of akimbo where with characters with four arms? Two plasma rifles. <laughs> that is terrifying. Hey, you asked the question. I just answered. I would I would say that I would say that it's terrifying, but we've seen certain shooters where we're dual where we're dual wielding assault rifles. I've seen certain shooters where I'm dual wielding uh, rapid fire rail guns. Mm -hmm. So I mean, still two plasma rifles, yep. and you and and they still spin them for deflect. Just plasma rifles. Yeah. Also, what I seem to recall that there was a supporting character in um, Killer is Dead who had all the pistols. <laughs> I don't remember their name. Fuck. That's something we could look up after. Mm -hmm. But... I'd say I'd say I'd say that the smuggler in this case set certainly fits its bill a bit a lot more. This isn't a case of get of getting more skill points than everybody else because it's very clear that they, that while they might get a bit of an edge with certain skill points, they're not getting any more skill points than any of the other classes we've seen previously. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to focus in certain skills, but that's par for the course with all the other classes. And that's something I do appreciate because it because by if they were to get more skill points than everyone else, then it might create some problems. Especially mm -hmm. given that one of those skills is gonna be your crucial skill for weapon combat. And I know what I know one might say, well what well what ab what about the amount what about the amount of skills that the that the rogue got for free in Heavens and Heresies. It got the skill setup. I look at the skill setup with Heavens and Heresies rogue as getting a head getting a head start on everything. Or be, yeah. or being a jack of all the or being a jack of all trades. There's also the fact that getting one le getting one level of expertise in ev in every skill isn't as overpowered as it might sound. Yeah. Which is why I describe it as a head start. Which incident incidentally the idea of class skills as a lot of as a lot of people see them, not a fan of it. Mhm. Mm Cuz no matter how you set up those class skills, inevitably someone is going to is going to is going to have some sort of build that doesn't fit. I vastly prefer a set a set of skill trainings that you have people assign or take the background approach of 13th age and not even have a skill system. But if you're going to have it, let it let it be free let it be free form. Which uh this game actually does quite well. Yeah, and the reason I rant on that kind of thing here is because of the fact that the rogue or smuggler or whatever you want to call his reputation as the skill monkey, 
I think is utilize. I think is utilizing an interpretation of the skill monkey that doesn't hold up to scrutiny and has been used mostly for tradition's sake. That whole design by gospel we talk about. Yep, it's a crutch. So I'm and I'm glad to see designers moving away from that crutch. Now next week, well. Were some of you annoyed about the Team Fortress 2 jokes that 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 we made early on? If so, we have bad news for you. They're coming back. <laughs> this isn't a farm, nor is it a zoo. They're com they're coming back in force. Cuz next week we have the soldier. And that'll be interesting because that because I find that the way, I find that the way to really test how interesting a game's mechanics are going to be, if they can make their if they can make the quote unquote basic fighter interesting. I uh I, I skimmed ahead just a tiny bit and I have high hopes. Mm -hmm. But that but that will be a story for next week. So until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>